The pattern repeat of this beautifully textured stitch pattern is four stitches and two rows around. So cast on a multiple of four stitches and if you plan to add this pattern to a project worked back and forth, then start the first row of the pattern by knitting three stitches. Simply knit them one by one. Then bring the yarn to the front of the work and slip the next stitch from the left needle to the right needle pro-wise that means that we insert the tip of the right needle into that stitch from right to left and just slip it while keeping the yarn at the front of the work and that's the pattern repeat now we bring the yarn to the back and knit the next three stitches yarn to the front slip the fourth stitch of the pattern repeat wise from the left needle to the right needle and do it again and again until you get to the very end of the row then turn the work and the second row of the pattern repeat starts by knitting two stitches because we slipped the last stitch of the previous row which is the first stitch of this row the yarn is not attached to that stitch but that's okay simply knit the stitch as usual and then knit the second one then bring the yarn to the front again and slip the third stitch of the pattern repeat and finish the pattern repeat by knitting one stitch and then we do the same thing knit two slip one with yarn in front knit one and you can do the same thing whether you hold yarn in your right hand or your left hand simply knit two stitches bring the yarn to the front of the work slip one stitch yarn to the back and knit the last stitch then repeat these two rows and you will form a lovely textured pattern as you work these two rows on and on and on you will notice two things first of all you will see that the pattern repeat is actually the same we knit three stitches and then we slip one stitch with the yarn in front of the work. But in the second row of the pattern repeat, this uh, sequence is shifted so that we could create lovely chains of stitches on both sides of the fabric. This little trick makes this stitch pattern highly textured and fully reversible. It looks exactly the same on both sides. The second thing that you will probably notice is the side edges of the stitch pattern. They are not the same. One looks like a chain of beads and this, the other one looks like a nice chain of stitches. Uh, so if you want to make the side edges the same, then use selvages and treat them in whatever method you like. To add this stitch pattern to a project worked in the round, we will also need to cast on a multiple of four stitches and work two pattern repeat rounds. The first round will have the same instructions as the ones that we followed when we worked this st uh, stitch pattern back and forth. So we start by knitting three stitches and then bringing the yarn to the front of the work and slipping one stitch pro-wise. And then repeat the same thing, knit three stitches, bring the yarn to the front, slip one stitch, yarn to the back, knit three stitches, and so on until you get to the end of the round. In the second round of the pattern repeat, we're gonna start by purling a stitch. So we purl one stitch, and then we don't want to disrupt this beautiful chain of stitches, so we're gonna bring the yarn to the back of the work and slip one stitch then the yarn goes to the front and we purl the next two stitches and this is our pattern repeat purl one slip one with the yarn at the back and this one slip stitch would be that nice uh, the stitch that belongs to that nice chain of stitches so that's gonna be a good marker for you where to slip a stitch and then we keep going until we get to the last stitch of the round as you work these two rounds on and on and on and on, you will see that the pattern you form, it looks exactly the same as the pattern we formed when we worked this stitch pattern back and forth, and 
it is consistent along the whole circumference of the project. There is no jog. So it is a good idea to place a stitch marker to mark the beginning of the round if you don't have a tail for some reason because this stitch pattern is absolutely jogless. And no matter whether you decide to add it to a project worked back and forth or the one worked in the round, you will make a texture that, that is very similar to the texture formed by Brior stitch, but a little bit less puffy and a little bit more structured. If you find this tutorial helpful, please subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon to be notified every time I publish a new video. Happy knitting, my friend. I'll talk to you in the next tutorial.